A test of a person really is a test of time. I mean, he's been doing this longer than I've been alive, longer than a lot of us have been alive. Probably the most passionate individual you'll ever meet, a rock star around the world. He's forgotten more about whiskey than I've ever learned. And once you start talking to him, you realize how much the guy knows. And you just want to keep asking him questions. It's, it's great. I see a lot of my father in him, and it's just kind of they're cut from the same cloth. Jimmy is the body and soul of When you think of wild turkey, you think of Jimmy Russell. If there was a Mount Rushmore of bourbon, Jimmy Russell would be one of the first faces on it. I'd consider him the father of bourbon. I'm just plain old Jimmy from Kentucky. I used to say I was an old country boy from Kentucky. I can't say that anymore. I'm an old fat ball headed man from Kentucky now. <laughs> In the morning when I get up, I get the glass on and I Thank you. Have a great okay, day. You too, sir. All right. Then head out here and get started. You know, I've never worked a day in my life. I don't feel like I feel like it's something I enjoy doing every day when I come to work. Hey, Jim. I started September 10th, 1954. Actually started right in the distillery, the making end of quality control. At that time, you done a little bit of everything. Back in that time that Jimmy grew up, this community was a blue collar, hardworking, uh, not just one job, multiple jobs. They were all solid families and they worked hard, sent their kids to school. The work ethic part, I mean, his father worked until the day he died. He's just that type of guy. You know, physical labor was something a part of Mr. Russell and Mrs. Russell, so the, their children got it. Who else stays at one job for 60 years? The intensity and how much passion one can still hold and the drive, I mean, it's just incredible. Gets up every morning, goes back and does the same thing and, and likes his job. How many days have I missed work? Uh, zero, I would think. <laughs> Where it comes from, you could bottle that up and sell that drive. Uh, it could, you could probably make a hell of a lot more than we do off our bourbon we make. It's a passion. It's not a job. I'm going to retire when it becomes a job. I thought that I was going to be a professional baseball player. I think if you look at my yearbook, it said something about that, but. Well, I mean, if you're from Anderson County, you should know Jimmy Russell. He's one of the all-time great athletes to ever participate in sports here. I know basketball, he was a Kentucky All-Star. Look at him, you wouldn't think that he was very fast, but he, he held the record for the 100-yard dash at the high school. So he might throw you down in the lane to get a bucket on you, or he might throw you down in the lane to get a rebound on you. In my eyes, as a coach, that's a great quality. <laughs> I think he's a born leader. I don't think that comes natural to everyone that's here, but it comes natural for him. I was always big in sports, and I thought I'd end up in that, or maybe coaching or something like that. But I ended up in the bourbon business, and I, I can't uh, complain a bit about it. That's one of the more interesting things about Jimmy that I think gets overlooked. He learned distilling from people who were distilling before Prohibition. Mr. Bill Hughes was a master distiller when I come here. For some reason, he more or less took me under his wing. You know, from making the yeast, making sure everything was done the right way. When I started, uh, you sit right on top of that steel, and that steel's hot. You had a hand on a steam valve, you had a hand on a flow valve. Now you got places where you can sit back, air condition, and just push buttons. 
the employees are a little more serious now. If you'd been here in the 60s, they, they was always pulling pranks on one another. Somebody had been up there and was water pouring down on top of you. Didn't make any difference who you was, plant manager, who you was. You never know who done it. And nobody ever got mad. They just get even. They, they worked, they worked hard, done an excellent job, but they had fun in doing it. The bourbon industry wouldn't be where it is today if it hadn't been for Jimmy Russell. And I tell people all the time, it's my generation's fault. They were anti-parents, anti-government, anti-whatever. And if your parents drank bourbon, I'm gonna drink something else. You know, we lost distillers, we lost distilleries. It would have been easy just to shut it down and say hell with it and do something else, which a lot of people did after Prohibition. When vodkas and gins got big, they started making a lot of light whiskeys. People went to light whiskeys, they went to straight whiskeys. I mean, but the pressure you can understand as a businessman, you know, lowering the proof of your whiskey, you can sell more bottles. We didn't do it here. Good thing that it didn't work out or I wouldn't have a job. We never made any of it. But he understood the long range goal, which was keep your quality, you keep your customers. Don't change a damn thing. And that's, and I, I gotta believe that's, I don't know, like tattooed on the inside of Jimmy's eyelids or something. I'm hard headed, old fashioned. I don't like to change. Now we're all over the world, and it's because he was still doing it the way he always had. He had the thing all the way through the damn wilderness when bourbon was wandering around and not knowing what it was. He knew and he held on to it, and he kind of brought us back. Back all 30 years ago, I guess, they decided they wanted me to go out in the field and work with our marketing and salespeople. You know, people didn't think of the master distiller like they do now until Jimmy and Booker Nose started getting out on the road. Think about it like this. You take a used car salesman and you put him out on the road trying to sell a bunch of used cars. But you take Bill Ford trying to sell a Ford Mustang, who do you think people are gonna listen to? I think the light went off in somebody's head, thank, thank God, that we've, we're onto something here. My first 21 years of life, Jimmy didn't say hardly anything. And then when I first went out with him on a marketing trip, he got up in front of people and talked for 45 minutes. He had them laughing, he had them crying. You know, I know when I'm gonna have a good day. When I get up in the morning and read the obituaries and I'm not in it, I know it's gonna be another good day for me. <laughs> when you get my age, you young people don't even think about that. Yeah, and I'm just clapping at the end. I went home and told my mother, I said, you don't know your husband. I said, it's unbelievable. One of the stories I remember well as anything, I was in California at a mom and pop store. You know what I'm talking about, mom? Yeah. We were sitting back, rear back in the chair, and a fellow was, and I, I kept, we kept talking about bourbon and all. He looked at me and said, you're real. <laughs> I said, what? You're real. Mama, come back here. This fellow's real. He makes it. <laughs> and so we were going to do a press conference, and um, Jimmy showed up that morning, and he looked a little tired, and we all said, Jimmy, okay? And he said, well, I just got off the plane from Australia. <laughs> I'm laughing. You just got the plane for Australia. Yeah, I've been there a few days, and then I'm going to Japan next week. And he, you know, he has been at every single whiskey fest. He's going to be there tonight. It's not a whiskey fest or not an event unless I see him. We actually have something we call the Jimmy Russell rule. Uh, you have to stay behind the table because Jimmy went in, he wanted to make friends, he grabbed a bottle of Kentucky Spirit and walked out to the front door and says, hi, my name's Jimmy Russell, would you like to try my whiskey? And we're like, no, 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 you gotta go back there. The funniest thing I saw was all these little girls just all over Jimmy. And he just, he looked like a spring chicken. And you know, it was just, I, it was so funny just to watch him. And what he was doing the whole time was talking about bourbon. There might be a half a dozen people that would come listen to him speak back in the late 80s, early 90s. Nowadays, you can get two or 300 to show up for a bourbon tasting. You know, and they just built that fan base one person at a time. These guys stuck with it 
when bourbon wasn't that popular. And they weathered the storm and they laid the foundation for all this popularity now. I'm not sure exactly when that light switch went off, but thankfully it did because I really think that was a big part of saving bourbon. To me, it can't get any better than your family, as far as I'm concerned. That's, uh, to me, your family is the first, first thing in your life. I remember coming in here as a little kid, uh, you know, in the warehouse and the smells and the cool temperatures down on the bottom and just different things like that just put a big impression on you. He didn't think I'd done him right when he come to work here. Eddie cut grass, he rolled barrels, he dumped bottles, he done everything that had to be done. You didn't think that was right, did you? I, I love the job, but yeah, I would have thought a man that run all the company would have put me in a little softer job, but probably the best thing that ever happened to me. I learned it from the bottom up. When I had to induct him into the Bourbon Hall of Fame, you had to get up and talk about your own son. I think I, I was crying, everybody else was. So you probably haven't seen me and Jimmy cry too much in our life, but that day was pretty tough on both of us, you know. Family is very important to me. That's not only my family at home, but my bourbon family is very important to me. I, I'm trying to learn something. Are you trying to learn something? Probably deep down inside, if I ever really wanted any fatherly advice, I would have no problem calling Jimmy and say, hey, what, I, what do you think, what do I need to do? And I know the advice he would give me would be coming from the heart and be the straight stuff. Oh, the first time I met Jimmy, I was probably a little boy. Him and my father, Booker, were such good friends. We'd help do anything we could for each other and always had a lot of fun. When Dad did pass away, we probably cried more than me and my mom did. Lost one of my good old buddies last year, Elmer Lee, over at Ancient Age or Buffalo Trace, whichever one y'all want to call it. Uh, Elmer's gone, Booker's gone. These were the old guard. These were the people that that learn how to make bourbon the old-fashioned way. Um, and Jimmy's kind of the last of his breed. Sum up Jimmy Russell in one word. One word, just one word? Fantastic. <laughs> just like his bourbon. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Prophet, like biblical? A character. One word always I've talked about Jimmy is just being genuine. What he says is what he'll do. Oh, they've taken them all. I was going to say integrity. Um, the whole family's got the highest integrity I've, I've ever seen. Fair. Honest. That's two words. Loyalty, honesty. Just a normal guy. Trustworthiness, dependable, supportive. It's passionate. It's true passion. The greatest. There will never be another Jimmy Russell, ever. If Jimmy Russell announced for governor, I'd just withdraw right now. Well, I want the legacy to be wild turkey. It's something everybody's proud of that's original, true to tradition. That's the legacy. He wants wild turkey bourbon to taste a certain way. And, you know, sometimes that can be backwards and a problem, and sometimes it is just the right thing to do. And I, I think that's, that's your legacy there. I mean, his name's on the bottle. You know, when your name's on the bottle, you know you've done something pretty good. Let me be one of the first to welcome you to the new Wild Turkey's Visitor Center, hereafter to be known as the Jimmy Russell throne room. <laughs> when you come across that bridge over the river towards the distillery and you see that big billboard, the house that Jimmy built, so true, so true. I, I mean, I, I wanna get a shirt like that and, and wear it. It's just true. Bourbon's been his life. You know, making high quality bourbon and sharing it with the world. And he's done it. I mean, he's built this industry up laid the groundwork 
for all of us to continue it on, and the sky's the limit now. The question I got when I first started going out on the road was, how are you gonna fill those shoes? My complete and honest answer was, I'll never be able to fill those shoes. I'm just glad that we've been fortunate enough to, I'm gonna get choked up. Uh, I'm just, I'm glad that we've been fortunate enough to have him here for 60 years. I hope that's the way it is when I leave here. I'll come to work that morning, that afternoon, when it's time to leave, just walk out. That's the way I like, would like it to. It'll never happen that way, I don't think, but that's the way I would like for it to happen.